Let's say hallelujah. hallelujah. We bless God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be what? Glad. We are still in the year of our Lord 2020. And this is the month of uh, March. And uh, I know some people know, but some don't. So I'm going to say that. Tomorrow, the second day, is my birthday. Hallelujah. And I'm turning what? Five and eight. That's wonderful. And I celebrate God. I celebrate His love for me. I celebrate His faithfulness, His mercies. I celebrate His good works towards me. He's brought me this far. And I'm thankful. Hallelujah. I can talk about my life, so many things that I've been through, so many people that have uh, stood against me, so many people that have opposed just me saying yes to the call of God, to the will of God, trying to please God, the things that He has done. I can talk about how people have maligned. They have said things that I have not done, things they have accused me of everything, but God comes through for me all the time. Am I moving too speed, speaking, speaking too fast? Okay, we welcome viewers all over the globe, Facebook Live, and those who are watching uh, through other uh, channels or medium. Hallelujah. We love you guys. Keep sharing the word because people should know the truth. And God wants us to share what? The truth. Okay, I want to say this. Some people have no business even handling microphones simply because even if they claim they are called, they have their own message. Because everyone that is sent by God has the message yeah. of God. Amen. Let's have, uh, for studies, let's have John 3, 34. If you are sent by God, sent from God, you preach his message. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It shouldn't be some other message. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. Amen. For God does not give the spirit by measure. Mm -hmm. If you are sent by God, you will speak his word. Amen. But some people are not speaking God's word. When he said go into the world and preach the gospel, what did he say? Go into the world. Let's have that. So Matthew 28, 19. And let's see what he said. Hallelujah. Amen. Go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? Okay. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. So if anybody claims he's a spiritual leader, to start with, he should come under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's the Lord of the church. He's the one who sends us. He's the what? Chief apostle. Chief shepherd. Amen. Amen. So, here is it. Here it is. You are to what? Teach people to observe. Not what you think. Not what your uh, denomination teaches. But what he has. The Lord of the church. The one who died for the church. Or the one who died for the world. What he has commanded. What he has commanded. Just like Ephesians chapter 6. It says, parents should bring up the children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Not in their own theory. Not in their own opinions. But that which is God. And that which is from God. So, there are some folks around. They are teaching things that are not of God. Even if it's written in the Bible. So, they are facts. That is not what they are commanded to teach. And one of the things that they are doing is the ministry of condemnation. The Bible calls it ministry of condemnation. The ministry of death. They are killing people. Because they are telling them what the devil is doing, 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 how powerful the devil is, how powerful the devil is. That is not the message that they ought to preach. It's my prayer that some people will study the word and not walk in pride. Hallelujah. What I have commanded you. My Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians 2, we are not to be ignorant of the device of the devil. But you, people are not sent out to talk about the devil. What did Jesus preach? What did John the Baptist preach? 
Repentance. What did Jesus preach? Repentance. Faith always God. The disciples. The kingdom. The good news. Jesus has died. Cornelius was not good. Acts chapter 10. He did everything good. But yet he wasn't born again. Hallelujah. Amen. And Peter showed up. What did he preach? Jesus. As he was preaching. I want you to realize this. That's why we are not seeing the power of God in our churches or local assemblies. Because we are not preaching God. And God has no business to confirm the dirt, the junk that they are preaching. Most of the time it's error. But people don't study the word, so they don't even know that what they are hearing is error. But because it's been practiced in the church for years, so they think, okay, we've seen this person do it, we've been doing this, that's the way we do it, so okay, no. Let's examine what we hear. Is the truth that makes free. Ignorance tends to what? Bondage. Hallelujah. Amen. And whilst Peter preached from uh, 34, verse 34, whilst he was sharing about Jesus, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit fell on them, Amen. just like the day of Pentecost. And they all received. How do we know that? They started to speak in tongues. The number one encounter, number one encounter, primary encounter, that everyone should have with the Lord. And that should be an ongoing process. It's through the word. Amen. It's not even through worship. It's not through prayer. It's through the word. Amen. In the beginning was the word. the word. The word was with God and the word was God. If anybody gets born again, he hears the word. Amen. Everything was created by the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Encounter with the word. But what are we then? We polluted the word of God. And so people sit down. They are waiting for somebody. Okay, I don't have a bottle of water. I have a glass of water. And you go to places. They take this bottle of water. And then they walk. And what was the word that I should use? They, 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 is it Paul? No, not Paul. They, they sprinkle. Yeah, that's it. Where? They need to go buy sprinklers and stop what they're doing. They sprinkle these things on people. They call that anointing. And people too are copying that. Tell me where Jesus was doing that. You see, we copy wrong stuff. And I want to say this and say it carefully. Everything that God does by his spirit, the devil counterfeits. So it always looks like God. But it's not God. That is why the magicians also put down their rods or their sticks when Moses put his down. So the fact that it looks supernatural, that doesn't mean it is God. Because hypnosis can get you so much sorcery magic I'm talking about. Can give you a word of knowledge. Can bring you healing. And that is what is going on now. There's heresy. And people don't study the word so they don't know the difference. But I want us to be like Paul. In Acts chapter 16, even though this woman said, she said the right thing, these from 16, these are men of God who show us the way of God. Referring to Paul and his company. And it was true. What she was saying was true. But then she did this for many days. And the Bible says, Peter, uh, Paul, knowing his spirit, that this is coming from a wrong origin. Because the spirit of God is the most true origin of what? Revelation. But we get other things from other areas. Because the realm of the spirit is not only the spirit of God. Hallelujah. So Paul turned around and rebuked the spirit. And then the spirit of divination came out. Sorcery, magic, hypnosis, hypnotism. Came out. And then as a result, Paul was put into prison because she couldn't make money for her masters anymore. Money. And that's what a lot of these preachers are doing. Money. I remember as a teenager, answering the call of God, first and foremost, it's not about money. It's not about material gains. It's about saying yes to God. It's about pleasing God. It's about doing His word. 
And our time, we'll say things like, we don't care if we, if we go hungry. We don't care if we don't have any clothes to wear. Now, people want to be in this business. I call it business because they made it business. But it's work. Ministry is work. They want to be in this work, this ministry, because of material benefits, prestige. And what bothers me so much, the so-called false apostles and prophets that have emerged. And have you realized? Because they are shooting for fame, prestige, and popularity, they always want to prophesy, predict something big time. They've missed it. They are not called in the first place. They are not sent in the first place. Hallelujah. Amen. They called themselves. Or man projected them. They always want to come to what? National what? Uh, recognition. So they will prophesy. Have you realized how they prophesy? A president dying. Hurricanes. Tornadoes. Disasters. Hallelujah. But nobody knows the things of the Spirit or the things of God except the Spirit of God. And God has given us His Spirit. Amen. He's given us His Spirit according to 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 2, 12. God has given us not the Spirit of the world, but His Spirit that we might know the things that are given to us, freely given to us. Amen. Freely given to us. Amen. But these money chasers, they will say, give 500, give 1,000. Bring this, bring that, and then you are going to get this. And because people are ignorant spiritually, and they don't know that they carry favor on them already, somebody says, I am anointed. When I lay hands on you, you are going to be favored. And so give me this amount of money, bring this, I'll bring oil, he's selling his own oil. And then when you anoint yourself with this oil, you are going to get favor. If you study your word, you won't fall for this. Because grace is favor. Grace. And according to uh, John chapter 1, we've received what? Favor upon favor. Grace upon grace. Amen. Read uh, uh, John 1.16. He said, Amen. grace and truth came through Jesus. Amen. We've received grace upon grace. Favor. Amen. You are joined as with Jesus. Is that no favor? You are in the family of God. Is that no favor? Amen. What is higher than that? Amen. A good spiritual leader will teach you, like I'm doing now, to know that you have favor. Amen. Because you are one. With the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, come boldly. Just this one scripture is taking me places. What scripture was there before? That is a... Uh... No, no. I'm talking about... I started with John, right? John 3, 3, 4. Let's go back there so I don't forget. I don't have notes. Hallelujah. Amen. So just this one thing. What, what did I get to before you really interrupted me? <laughs> now you're making me forget my little... Uh... Hallelujah. Amen. I was talking about favor. Yeah. <laughs> when you know the word of God, when you have understanding of it, you understand that you carry favor. Like I always say, this simple example God is not going to ask you to do something he knows you're not capable of doing. So if he says, love one another, I will love one another, that means he's giving you, continue, he's giving you. If he says, love one another, it means he's giving you what? Grace. Yes. You have the grace to do it. It means you have love to give. Because if you don't have, you can't give what you don't have. So you have grace, you have love that you can give. Grace is tied with love. Hallelujah. It's tied to it. Because Romans 5, 5 says, the love of God has uh, been shed abroad in our hearts. So you have it. In Luke chapter 4, 18, when Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, when you read it, it's, talk, it's talking about how the grace of God now flows profusely. It's talking about favor. If you're in the kingdom of darkness, if you call out of that, and you've been brought into the uh, family of uh, uh, his dear son, that is favor. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm going to say my favorite thing. The fact that ignorance is awake in somebody, that is why they will go and wrestle with God. That's why they will fast. That's why they will pray tirelessly and say, God, give me favor. Like Jacob did. 
And these are some of the messages that they preach to gain money from people. Jacob wrestled with God. So you have to wrestle with God. Wrestle with God. Then what's the point of Jesus dying for us? If we have to wrestle with God, it is by our own effort. The only thing God wants us to do is to respond. That's called faith. Respond to his word. The finished work of Jesus Christ. Everything is in that. You don't have to wrestle. If you are born again, you don't have to wrestle like Jacob. Those who say that you don't know their word. Now, the fact that some people are popular or they are known, that doesn't mean that what they are teaching is correct. And I know in the Western world we follow celebrities. Abraham was blessed. And God said, the blessing is upon you, it's upon your children, it's upon your descendants. So it was on Abraham, it came on Isaac, it was on Jacob. Jacob didn't know. He was trying to get everything the natural way. And that is where some children of God are. They are trying to get things the natural way. But we are supernatural. We are born of God. What is in us is God. We are to act on his word, which is spiritual. Spirit and life. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are what? They are spirit. They are life. God is spirit. Amen. A chicken brings forth or gives birth to what? Chicken. Not a goat. So if we are begotten of the word, which is spiritual. We are spiritual. We have the human aspect, like I've been saying. But let's lean on the deep, divine. The divine, eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. Eternal life. This is what they should be preaching. Jesus paid it all. He paid it all. We don't have to earn his love. We don't have to earn his affection. We don't have to earn his protection. If you are born again, if you respond to the word, and you genuinely, according to Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has risen from the dead, you are saved. For with the mouth, for with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That is it. Whoever believes on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 16, 31, shall be saved. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to the world. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes. That is John 3, 16. If you believe, you have. Amen. That's in our favor. Amen. So, please, I'm advising you, be careful. We are in 2020. I started warning you. 2019. You have to position yourself. God doesn't work with ignorance. Hallelujah. He works with his truth. Word. Gideon was ignorant of who he was. He was the deliverer in Judges chapter 6. He was the deliverer. He was the chosen to deliver the Israelites from the Midianites. But he did not know. In the same way, some people don't know what they carry, who they are in Christ Jesus, what they're capable of doing, because they keep referring to the fallen nature. You don't have a fallen nature, you have the nature of God, the nature of Christ Amen. in you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That nature is flawless. Amen. Amen. If you keep looking at your flaws, you are looking at the uh, wrong thing. Let me hurry up. That was just introduction to what I really want to talk about. Let's go to John 13. I want to talk to you about love. And I titled this Faith for Serving. Faith for Serving. Or Faith for Service. I don't think you've heard this preach anywhere. Hallelujah. I've been around for a long time. I started full time in uh, 1985. I was 23. And I said yes to the Lord. And I quit my job. And I've been doing this ever since. Hallelujah. Amen. When I started, I'm not where I am today, knowledge-wise, maturity-wise. But I'm growing. I haven't arrived. I'm still a work in progress. Amen. So are you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In John, did I say John 13? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. But because I mentioned, we have to do what? We have to have faith for service. Not have to. We have faith for service. So I'm talking about faith for serving or faith for service. The Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2, the just shall live by faith. 
When it comes to Romans 1, 16, the just shall live by faith. Galatians 3, 11, the just shall live by faith. When you read, uh, um, um, uh, what's the name? Hebrews chapter 10, 35, 35 or 38, it says, 35 says, cast out away your confidence, which has great confidence of the world, right? Then 38, the just shall live by faith. Amen. And then 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. What is that? Faith is acting on the word of God. And in Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith it is impossible. Without faith is what? Impossible to please God. So say this with me. Faith is acting on God's word. And faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. So it starts with God. We'll talk about faith. Not this foolish faith that is being talked about out there. I'm talking about saving faith that comes from God. That is not based on presumption. It's not based on somebody's whims and caprices. It's not based on somebody's philosophies and theories. It's not based on somebody's opinion. Faith it's contingent on the word of God. In the absence of the word of God, you can't tell me you are walking by faith. You can't tell me what you are doing is based on faith. It's no faith. Because read Hebrews 11. I've been teaching this in this house for years now. When you read in Hebrews chapter 11, you realize that it says by faith, Noah built an ark. Is it because he sat down one day and said, I'm going to build an ark? God said, build me an ark. He responded to the word of God. He acted on the word of God. That's what we call faith. Amen. Abraham, in uh, the 11, uh, sorry, 8th verse, in Hebrews 11, the Bible says, by faith he obeyed God. He led his people. He led his country for a place that God was showing him. By faith. Because God said, Abraham, in Genesis 12, leave your people to a place I'm going to show you. Amen. You get what I'm talking about? Yeah. Peter just did not cast his net. But the Lord Jesus said, cast your net. Let down your net. And he did it. That's called faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The twins are in the house. Wow. <laughs> like I said, if you've not seen twins be dedicated before, <laughs> twins will be dedication. Come. Hallelujah. Amen. So you see, faith has everything to do with the word of God. Everything to do with the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. Uh, Romans 10, 17. And hearing by the word. And faith works by love. According to Galatians 5, 6. Faith works by what? Love. Because God is love. And love is of God. His word and himself are inseparable. So you can't say you are living by faith. Some of these things people are doing, they call it faith. Lord have mercy. They, are, they must be happy I'm not God. Seriously. Hallelujah. Let's go to the 13. John 13. I don't like the nonsense that is going out there. That's why we're into missions. Check Acts chapter, uh, when you read the Acts of the Apostles. These people did the same thing. When the people got born again in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that they joined themselves to the believers and they continued the Apostles' doctrine. What was that? What Jesus taught the Apostles. They continue in the same. You have to be taught before you begin to teach. But people want to run around when they have nothing to offer. It's dangerous. Hallelujah. You preach the good news. Not condemnation. Not condemnation. Not condemnation. There's too much talk about sin, 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 sin. Teach the people who they are in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So verse 35. No, let's start from 34. 34, I'm sorry. John 13, 34. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Right? 35. When we say commandment, a new commandment, He's talking about what? Injunction. He's talking about an authoritative prescription for life. Hallelujah. A new commandment. 
the, uh, the Pharisees realized that Jesus is different. The Sadducees realize it. The people realize it. That Jesus is not following the traditions. Because he is the truth. He's a new king in town. He is the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And he came to change that was. To bring about that which should be. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says a new one I give to you. Lord. I give you all a new commandment. What is that? What is that commandment? Simple. What is our commandment? Love one another. Turn to somebody and tell the person, I want to give you a love look. Hallelujah. I have, he said, I have loved you. He's the greatest example that ever lived. And don't forget, I've been teaching you that Jesus took upon himself the form of a servant. He took upon himself uh, what? Flesh and blood, even though he was divine. So we, the same thing, we are born from above. So we are divine. Though we have flesh and blood. And he lived for us to know that we can do this. So we can love our enemies. You get it? And when they are hungry, we can feed them. Amen. Hallelujah. So he says, by loving, all will know that you are my disciples, my followers. If you love or have love one for another. You see, this that we have said right here is done by faith. It's done by grace. Because some of you, you know that you are difficult to be loved. I'm not talking about somebody else. I'm talking about you. <laughs> you love people by grace. I'll say this. Everything that God tells you to do, you can't do it by your own natural ability. Tell to somebody, tell the person that. Tell him. Tell him. Everything that God tells you to do, you can't do it by your natural ability. Oh, you are saying like you're afraid of them. Look at them and say it boldly to them. Uh -uh. I didn't hear you. You see how some people are whispering? But go to their house and see them when they are praying to God. When they are talking to God, they forget that God is the boss. God, I've been telling you that all this. Look at how you're waiting. That's how they talk to God. <laughs> you see, by this shall all men know. It's not by faith. So in 1 Timothy 6, 12, it says, Fight the good fight of faith. We have to fight the good of fight of faith in order to love people to work with them. I want to say that again. We have to fight the good fight of faith. This is a faith fight. So we can love people. Why love people? When you love people, then you can serve them. We serve people at times because we want to be acknowledged. We want to be noticed. Self-promotion, self-exhortation, healing agenda, strings attached. Jesus did not come to serve that way. As, as a matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 20, 28, it says, I, I came not to be served or to be ministered or to, but to minister. Amen. Do you get it? Yeah. Hallelujah. And everything that we do, we should do it what? In love. According to 1 Corinthians 16, 14, you do everything what? In love. Though, so it says, serve one another. Now I'm going to touch on something that is tough. I'm going to touch on something. This love, faith for serving, there's a way you have to position yourself, pastor yourself. I don't know you can't do it. So let's go to, Jesus gave us an example. He laid down his life. Didn't he do that? Yes. According to John 15, 13, it says, greater love has no man than this, that he, a man should lay down his life for his friends. Yeah. Yes, he laid down his life. And in 1 John chapter 3, 16 says that, hereby we know love. He laid down his life. So we ought to lay down our lives for one another. You see how I'm throwing scriptures to you? These are the scriptures. Not, not the giving, giving, giving scriptures that you, some of you are studying and you memorize. Hallelujah. Amen. But for you to do this, let's go to first, what did I say? Hebrews. 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 12. From verse 1. Therefore, we also say we are surrounded by what? So Come on, tell me, surrounded by what? So great a cloud. Are you guys hungry yet? No. Tomorrow is going to be my birthday. No, come on, give me some excitement. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Therefore, since we are also surrounded by so uh, great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, all the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance. Run with what? Endurance. Run with what? Endurance. Okay. The love walk takes endurance. Yes. The race that is set before us. For God so loved that he gave. Yeah. Jesus so loved that he died. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit so loved, so he tolerates our nonsense. He's always giving. He, he's giving us gifts. Mm -hmm. All right? So love gives. Love. Say, love gives. Love gives. Amen. Love is never selfish. Okay, let's read on. Looking unto Jesus. This is the key thing. If you are going to be able to walk in love, and do it in a way that is pleasing to God. And then serve like God wants you to serve. Jesus served. Even those that were trying to kill him, he was dying for, he served them. Those who spat on him, still he died for them. That servant, he loved them. The thief that was saying all kinds of things to him when he was on the cross, still he loved them. Hallelujah. That is Jesus. They pushed their 30 crowns on his head, still he loved them. Peter saw it. And he said, me? No way. This man, I don't know him. He wasn't ready. Are you also saying the same thing? Hallelujah. But he says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, the love walk, despising the shame, and I sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking unto Jesus, that's what we have to do. Looking unto Jesus. But people have made it their business to look at fellow men. Paul said it this way. Follow me as I follow Christ. First Corinthians 11. Follow me as I follow Christ. In Ephesians he says, be imitators of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So you don't have any business following anybody who is not following hard after Christ. Amen. He's not a good example. He will teach you. So he says, follow me as I follow Christ. All right? You imitate what? God. You imitate his love. So looking unto Jesus, that is why your eyes, your eyes should be on Jesus. Your focus should be on Jesus. But what have we done? We don't look at Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. If you are going to serve people and you look at them, you would be deprived of of a motive, you'll be deprived of motivation yeah. to serve them. So he said, the master himself, a greater example, we have to look unto what? Jesus. Amen. He kept, Jesus kept his eyes on what the Father has said. The cross, the agenda, the assignment. Our assignment is to love one another. Is to serve one another. We have to keep our focus on that. He didn't say, check your daddy out. Hey, you are my own daddy, but how can we do this? No, I'm moving out. You are my own daddy, I'm going to disconnect from you. You are my own daddy, but keep doing this. I won't use your name anymore. You are my mother, and I can't believe you. You bought me nine months in your home. You are how can I find out that you are a witch, 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 witch. I mean, uh, no, no, no. He didn't call us to focus on what they do. The focus should be on the commandment he gave us. The commandment to love. The commandment to love. Amen. Now, I know some of you, you tell me, it's in the Bible. It's true. In a, a, a Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7, it says, you have to imitate, let's read it, because some people don't know it. Hebrews 13, 7. Hallelujah to Jesus. I have one more scripture, I'm done. I've not heard even one amen from you today. Does it mean I'm not doing well? Hebrews 37. Remember those who have rule over you. Who, who are those who have rule over us? Spiritual leaders. And I'll say this. We are not to worship spiritual leaders. We are not to idolize spiritual leaders. They are messengers. Servants of God. Who has spoken the word of God to you? So that's the job of the spiritual leader. To speak the word. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he says, whose faith follow? 
whose faith follow. He didn't say follow their nonsense. He didn't say follow their uh, what? Uh, arrogance. He didn't say follow their pride. He didn't say that. Faith. Faith is for service. And a genuine man and woman of God, called of God, appointed by God, anointed by God, authorized by God, they walk in faith to love the people of God, to feed the people of God, to guide the people of God, to direct the people of God into the things of God, to prepare a people that are ready for His coming. Amen. That's what it is. It's not about trying to manipulate the word of God so He takes money from them. For his personal gains. Have you realized? Genuine ones are suffering because they don't know how to steal. I'm talking about genuine ministers of God. They are even afraid to talk about money because they don't want to touch on money and people will get upset and leave the church because their souls are dear to them. But go to where they peddle money, they're always talking about money. And they will tell you, we need a microphone. We need seats. So we are, they will say, you know, you have to sow to this ministry. You have to be connected to this ministry. So that nothing that is under this ministry will come upon your life. So there's even nothing to be given for, but still they will take your money. That's wrong. That's wrong. Please, don't go into ministry copying these things. Don't do it. There are other people on TV, on radio, they don't do that. Copy good examples. Amen. Some people don't have anything to do with any church now because they were in the church, they were used, they were abused, and they were thrown out. So they don't have trust for servants, spiritual leaders anymore. Don't look at them. Don't look at them. Look at the word of God. And I'll give you an example. When you talk about leaders, spiritually, who are in good standing, go to First Peter, because I'm saying this. You see, wait, wait, wait. Let's look at the verse 17. You see, this carries weight. Spiritual things, if you get it wrong, they can destroy your life. Let's look at the verse 17. Then I'll shift. Hallelujah. Where do you go? The same book, 13, 17. Hallelujah. Hebrews. 13, 17. I know what he said. You guys have heard the word and over. But some have not seen it. Obey those who have rule. We started by those who speak the word unto you, right? The same people. Obey those who have rule by you. And this is what I've seen in the church, the body of Christ, which is wrong. I've seen people who are that committed, very loyal to quack, false preachers. Why? Because the spirit of deception that is at work in the life and on the life of that leader is upon the followers. They are bewitched. And the way they follow hard after these people, you speak the word of God, they don't batch because the spell is on them. How can a Christian carrying the Holy Spirit come under such a spell? Bewitched. So to start with, Colossians 3 16 is what is the problem. The antidote for this uh, uh, thing. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. So the word of God was in there. So they fall for anything. We examine everything we hear. Everything we see by the word. Everything has to be in sync with the word of God. Everything has to line up with the word of God. Prophecy has to line up with the word of God. And what they say, a, a, a spirit told me, the spirit said, that is not the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let the word of God go in you. So we have to obey spiritual leaders. We have to submit to them. Amen. That is why I have to check them out. Amen. And I'm going to give you one thing that you can know for sure. Alright? Go to First Peter. Because I like to touch on the problem and bring you the solution or the remedy. So First Peter chapter 5. Let's read from verse 1. If you don't see this in a spiritual leader, I started by saying, if he's sent by God, he will talk the word of God. Hallelujah. He will be speaking life. He will be speaking truth to you. Not something dead. How to go and anoint your house. And the next time, then he sells another oil. He will say this for prosperity. Anoint your press. Anoint your wallet. That's foolishness. The way to prosper is to believe in the Lord. Amen. He told Joshua, he didn't say, Joshua, go anoint. 
He said, Joshua, this word, meditate on this word. Do it. Do it. Do it. And you are going to prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The elders, pastors, spiritual leaders, who are among you, I exalt. I also am a fellow one, elder, spiritual leader, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory. That word will be revealed. Two. Verse two. Shepherd. That's our job description. Shepherd the flock of God. Shepherd the flock of God. I talk to people all over the world. And I know what I'm talking about. And this is one of the complaints. Pastors, they look at, when people come in the house, they look at people like, oh, I can see something on this sister. This sister looks like she's loaded, she has money. Then they'll befriend that person. This is what is going on. And some who are bent, they are talking to me about this. They are burned. They say this is what they do. When they get things from you, then they look for another person, then they get close to and then they take from them. They are looking for people who carry what? Uh, what do you call it? Giftings, graces, abilities. And then they use them. Make me look good. Make me look good. That's not what Jesus did. Ministry is to acknowledge that this is a, it's not your property. It's the property of God, child of God. Acknowledge that this is a child of God. This is a child of destiny, child of purpose. Help them know, wake up. To who they are in Christ, what they carry, what they are called to do, what, and then equip them to do it. That's what Jesus did. That's ministry. That's ministry. It's not about shopping for talents. Oh, God has called me to reach the nations. Oh, I need a secretary. I need a bookkeeper. I need somebody who can sing. I need somebody who can play the keyboard. Then you are going around and you are shopping. Jesus didn't do that. He poured into the people. And we are copying these things blindly. Because we have imported the church, the world, the world into the church. Hallelujah. Amen. So it says what? What? Shepherd them. Lead them. Like a shepherd will do the sheep in the natural. Serving as what? Overseers. Not by what? You see, these days how some leaders, they are bullies. They are authoritarians. God leads, leads us by love. Amen. That's why I always tell you. People want me to be bossy. I don't know how to be bossy. The word of God doesn't allow me to be bossy. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to walk in humility. Amen. Not by compulsion, but willingly. Not for what? Dishonest gain. Filthy looker. That's what King James says. Not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, go to the next verse. No, as well. Read together. Read, 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 read. All of you, read. No, as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. This is what you look for in a leader. Not this bossy thing, air of arrogance around them, they're walking around. The first thing somebody said when they are called, I have to have uh, some armor bearers, I have to have some bodyguards. Foolishness, nonsense. Nonsense. Hallelujah. Amen. This is why we are going out to teach people, to train them. And everyone I go when I have the opportunity, I do it. Hallelujah. I love people to serve. I told you, I was, I was in Ghana last year. One person, one place I went to minister, this person was begging me. He wanted me to bring prophesy to people. I said, look, this is what I do. When I go to a place, I just don't come take money. I don't do that. I don't take money from people. Like I've been telling you, some place when I'm giving off, I give it back. I don't go there because of money. Do I have money? Yes, but I don't go there because of that. I know my assignment. Amen. But I said, look, I call people out of his own congregation. I said, look, I'm going to activate them now. I'll be gone. They are going to prophesy. I activated, I activated three people. They started prophesying. Word of knowledge, everything. I'm not talking about my children, my children, I'm your miss. My children, my children, no worry. I'm talking about serious stuff. They were ministering. And I let them there. They said they are prophets. And they come in town, they deplete the church. They drain the church. No deposit. Are they prophets? They are not. I'll close by this. In, uh, in uh, Matthew 25, you know that there was a, uh, uh, this Lord that was going away. He gave uh, five, uh, what, 
talents. Continue, so I know you know it. So I don't have to be work hard. He gave five talents to one, and then the other said, on how many? Who said three? Aha, 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 let's read and find out what that the Bible says three. Who said two? Who said three? So when the person stands there and says, you know, the Bible says, and the Lord of the servant, and he gave to some people there, and he said, you see, if you sow a $5,000 seed, you are going to release and say, hey, read the word. Hallelujah. Amen. So 14, 25, 14. Matthew 25, 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and uh, delivered his goods to them. To one he gave... Five. To another one, two. To another one, one. Okay, sister says, then he who had received five talents, he went and did business with that, and he received what? Five more. Okay? Likewise, the one who received two, two more. But look at what uh, the one who received one day, 18. But he who received one went and died in the ground, and he is lost money. Hallelujah. Amen. But look at the response that was given to him. Then, uh, 24. Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and gather where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have uh, what is yours. Because of my time, I'm rushing. Hallelujah. But 22, for instance, he who had received uh, two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. 23, the Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over what? A few things I'll make you what? A ruler over many things. But the one who received one, and then he did and uh, hid the money, look at what was said to him. 26, but his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked, lazy servant, you knew what that I reap where I have not sown, and gather where I have not what? Scattered seed. 27 is key. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. Yeah. And at my coming, I would have received uh, what? Back my own with interest. This is the year of fruitfulness. Amen. It's a year of fruitfulness. Amen. But I started telling you, you have to position yourself. Amen. Why? In 1 Peter chapter 4, 10 following, the Bible says we have received gifts. We have received abilities. We have received graces from God. We have to use. Look at what this guy said. I know you are a what? A hard person. He was looking at his master. The Bible says, look at Jesus. Don't look at your pastor, especially. He says, follow his word. Work of faith. Yeah, Hallelujah. Amen. Don't look at what he's doing so wrong. A pastor shouldn't be doing wrong in the first place. Like a parent shouldn't be doing wrong in the first place. You should be modeling truth. Hallelujah. Yeah. But don't look at human beings. When you look at them, you'll be discouraged. And then you are going to put yourself and your gift in prison. You will not be able to be productive. You will not be able to serve. You will not be able to what you love. Because you look at your own sister and say, mm, This is my sister. I don't call her a sister. You know, that kind of thing. This my... No, no, no. It, you, won't, you, won't, you won't do what you have to do. So don't look at them. And some of you, that's why I'm saying that. Faith. Faith acting on the word of God. He said, Love one another. Faith to serve one another. So do it. Serve. Listen to God. Focus on Him. Focus on His Word. Keep doing what He says do. Especially when it comes to giving. Not like, ah, I'm giving, I'm giving. Eh, like mosquitoes. Eh, or bees. They sing honey. What is that? What is that? And then you find such people, they give to all kinds of foolish things. They will give to themselves foolish things, but they won't give to the things of God. Look, it says, serve, serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Do all things without what? Complaining, grumbling, memory. Yeah. You focus on that. Do what you can. Ask. It says, according to what you have. Right. Not, not, not what you don't have. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. If first there's a willing heart, that's 2 Corinthians 8, 12. If there's a willing heart, according to what you have, according to what God has blessed you with, yeah. do it. Don't look at somebody. Do it. That's what you can do. He's raised you to do it. Do it. Amen. Joseph continued to serve regardless of the injustice. What the brothers did to him. Amen. You give people too much power to stop you. Amen. Let the power of God go to work in your life. Amen. Let the power of God go to 
worked in your life. Amen. Amen. You have what it takes to serve. You have something that you can bring to the table. But some of us, this is the reason why we are not serving. Oh, I did this and I did that. And somebody said this about me. So I'm not doing it anymore. Is it God? Did he tell you to serve? Did he tell you to love? I'm not doing it anymore. Oh, I've been doing this and look, he's not even said once to me. Thank, thank you. I'm not doing it. I'll do, I'll do it. Me, I said, me, people know me. When I said I'm not doing it, I don't do it. He didn't say thank you. To, I'm not doing it. Who are you, God? <laughs> Is it the way we think? Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm fired up. I want to talk. But I'm looking at the clock. Amen. To be continued. Amen. So serve. Refuse to be stopped. Amen. 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 